Serious, what job is always misrepresented in movies and TV shows, and what is it really like? Many are. Lawyers are one. Most of it is long hours of mind-numbing research and drudge work. They are not always in court wowing people with insightful cross-examinations and brilliant closing arguments. Most forensic law shows where the same characters act as detectives, go out in the field and collect evidence, take it back to the lab and analyze it themselves, and then bring down the bad guy in court. They'd have you think that the entire chain of custody is one person when it's really like 10 different jobs rolled into one. Generally politics government. Oddly Parks and Rec gets really really close to viral. I feel like 90% of the time I see someone welding in a movie they are holding a cutting torch. I've seen arc welders used in place of cutting torches as well. Weird. All mechanics are secretly super smart talented and are only working as a mechanic to make ends meet due to the tragic circumstances in their life that made THRM give up on their dreams. Most mechanics I know are pretty happy with where they are in life and enjoy their jobs. Janitors. Janitors are always having a blast listening to their music and singing into their mop. Hackers. Most aren't criminals. They work for security companies paid to find weakness in online security. And they don't hack into a system just by typing fervently for 5 seconds. Locksmith lockpicking. Attention wrench is never in sight. Terminator 2. Sarah Connor uses attention wrench. Archaeologists and paleontologists. Know what's fun? Flying to places like Egypt or Mexico to find ruins. No way is not fun. Bug bites. Heat stroke. Going for days without a bath in 50 degree. With humidity, weather, sunburn, digging for hours, decoding pictographs that were written and eroded thousands of years ago, being overshadowed by someone who pretends to be the sole person on the expedition, being tossed aside by someone who wants to advance their career and attempts to take credit for your stuff, accidentally breaking something, the dirt, the heat, and did I mention the stink? A kid has never delivered my newspaper. It's usually some old guy who appears to be drunk driving. There's a King of the Hill episode about this. The editor of the Arlen Bystander didn't like that all of their papers were delivered by a bunch of guys getting drunk in the parking lot of a 7 stroke 11. So they switched to hiring kids for the image. The music industry is made up of guys going from show to show just hoping to hear some unknown band that they can offer a big money contract to on the spot. But these music industry people are always on the lookout for a hot new sound, and certainly not interested in something that sounds like everything else and thus proven to be marketable. I work for a label. Scouting for a new act is my sitting at my desk and listening to bad demo after bad demo. It always makes me feel so conflicted between wow, this is awful and this is this person's life dream that I am thoughtlessly throwing away. I love my job, but it sure is a lot of bad music and spreadsheets some days. Being a fighter pilot. Most of the time we are just flying around in the local airspace practicing against each other. Couple of times each year we fly to some other state to practice against each other. Once a year we go to a friendly country to practice against each other. All this excitement mixed in with the paperwork management and epic bureaucracy of every other soulless government job. The real busy guys are the ones who drop bombs and haul cargo. The rest exist to get better at dog fighting each other in the hopes that our skills are a deterrent to real combat engagement. Yes. It's still a fun dream job but I hoped it would be more like Top Gun than The Office. Fire suppression sprinkler systems. A pretty common trope is that one character will activate a fire alarm pull station, setting off the sprinklers throughout the building, in order to get out of class, work, etc. Pulling the fire alarm will never set off the sprinklers. The sprinkler system works like this. The sprinkler pipes are filled with water when the system is installed. There is a pump on the system, which keeps the water in the pipes constantly under pressure. The sprinkler heads are just an opening in the pipe and a small, star-shaped plate which causes the water to spray in all directions. There is a glass tube which plugs the opening in the sprinkler head. The glass tube is filled with a liquid which expands a lot when heated. When the glass tube is heated enough, the liquid expands to the point where it shatters the glass. With the glass broken, it can no longer plug the opening in the sprinkler head. The water then sprays out. The only way more than one head can activate at a time is if they are all heated enough to allow liquid to shatter the glass plug in each. 
Pulling a fire alarm station will set off the fire alarm throughout the building, but it will not set off sprinklers. Source, I install fire alarm systems. And the water most likely won't be clear. More likely that it will be reddish brown and smell terrible. Security. Not a lot of shows show just how mind-numbing it is to watch a security camera for 8 hours. I think a lot of shows get security right. Most of them the bad guy just sneaks past them because the guard fell asleep. My favorite is when I see a lab setting in a show and there are always beakers filled with some kind of colored liquid and it's boiling for no apparent reason. I have only worked in a couple labs but if I saw a beaker with a weird color boiling then I would probably be concerned. Especially if it's not under a hood. The hazardous waste at my last job always came out pink and as nice as it was to look at I'm pretty sure you don't want that boiling for no reason. This isn't really a job, but it's related. Students, I will never understand how people cast like 26 year olds to play high school sophomores or some crap. In an actual high school, half of the people look like they're about 12. Also, passing time is 5 minutes, tops. None of that 20 minute montage bulls where the characters have time to do anything but haul butt to their next class because it's on the other side of the building. Bullying in high school isn't a group of football players pointing at some kid in glasses and going haha, loser. Absolutely no one does that. It's subtweeting and whispering and saying crap to wind people up and make it look like it was their fault. It's baffling how much they get wrong. I think the people that direct those movies are taking from their own high school experiences in the 70s and 80s which are no longer relevant, or very rare, today. 21 Jump Street actually makes fun of this. Long time AMT here, most of the stuff we do is really boring, probably 95% of the calls are on RBS. You probably wouldn't believe how many times when I ask so why did you call 9, 1, 1, that I get told well. I got Medicaid and if I go to the hospital in an ambulance I'll get seen quicker. I've picked up people for things like headaches, back pain, knee pain, toothaches. One of the most memorable BS calls I've ever ran in my life is a guy that called 911 because he was working on his van and it fell off the jack. He wasn't under the van at the time but standing 10-15 feet away and the noise scared him. Yes, really. My favorite was always the I hurt myself 3 weeks ago and I'm calling you at 4am because it still hurts but no, I don't want to go to the hospital. Librarians on TV are usually depicted as people who sit at a desk all day, reading, and shush people. Librarians in real life do wildly different tasks depending on the kind of library they work at. The librarian sitting at the desk in a public library will sometimes read or browse the internet at downtime but it's only because there's nobody there looking for help or reference. In the back office there's usually another librarian or two who are planning future programs. Selecting materials to purchase license. Weeding out materials that aren't circulating. Planning displays. Or managing the department's budget. At the library I work at, the librarians rotate time at the reference desk. Librarians at a college library will be assisting with research, conducting research of their own, running a class to teach bored undergrads how to use this, that, or the other database, as well as some of the above tasks, like managing purchases or, more usually, managing licensing, or budgeting. A librarian at a museum or archive might be trying to figure out how to digitize a rare book without destroying it or how to best catalog a map. Some librarians do a lot of the above but with additional training and degrees like a legal or medical librarian and so they never interact with the public. There's a big difference between librarian and someone who works at a library, though. Capital L librarians are master's degrees professionals. The clerk working the checkout desk shushing people is unlikely to be a librarian. I noticed this while watching a lot of Christmas movies on Lifetime and Hallmark. Jobs in advertising. In movies they are always preparing for a giant presentation right before the holidays and have no time for anything else when in real life, a campaign for the holidays would have already been sold months ago and already running. A grave isn't a perfectly dug out rectangular prism. That's a good way to have it collapse. Fear more like a steep bowl. Security guard. Suppose it'd be weird to see a guard in a show watching shows on his phone or tablet. Astronomer here. 
we never really go to an observatory on a mountain top, let alone actually look through the telescope anymore. There are still some astronomers who do visit the observatory, perhaps once a year or so, but for the majority of us you are doing remote observing most of the time, or having others take the data for you and downloading it onto a computer for analysis. Then we just sit in our offices all day analyzing it and writing up what we've found. There's also a hell you've a lot fewer aliens than you'd think from watching television. Scientists. They are often portrayed as being universal problem solvers who know all the sciences and are super smart. In reality, scientists have highly specialized expertise, don't know much outside their own field, are more intelligent than average but not much more. Social workers in the UK. TV would have you believe that social workers can just take children into care for the minimal of reasons. They never portray that social workers have to amass evidence, make an application to the court, and present their evidence. Only then can a decision be made an order granted, and this decision is made by a judge and not the social worker. We have TV show called EastEnders and they portray social workers terribly. It's lazy writing that just feeds into the misconception. A popular show as this could really challenge these misconceptions, but they just feed the ignorant. Flight Attendant. It's portrayed as such glamorous life. It can be. After 30 years of seniority, it's a lot of early mornings with no sleep and a lot waiting in airports. I don't see software QA come up in movies TV very often, but when I do, it seems to be along the lines of let's play this completely constructed, finished immersive video game and check to make sure it's as fun as we thought it was going to be. We'll have a blast, as long as there aren't any horrible ice waiting to torture us. Software testing is a lot more of like, do this really specific sequence of actions that we found 2 years ago to break the system. Does it break the system again? Nope. Good. Okay. Now, do this other really specific sequence. Does it break the system again? Yep. Okay. Log it. Document it. Now do this third really specific sequence. My dev test friends and I burst out laughing when the team and grandma's boy found all the bugs. More out of embarrassments for the writers and cast than any actual comedic intent. I've been rewatching early seasons of Friends and it seems any time Ross gets a call into work it's to adjust a display. Something tells me a paleontologist has somewhat higher responsibilities. Pizza delivery drivers none are handsome, well hung studs in their 20s. I was a pizza delivery guy, I delivered many a large sausage. People just paid me for the pizza and I left. University professors. For starters, a lot of university faculty is not full-time tenure, they're underpaid contract faculty that's probably significantly below the poverty line and are fighting tooth and nail for something resembling job security. It's also not a whole lot of inspirational lectures that change the lives of their students, though that does happen, and then you just head off to your glorious mahogany filled office to do some light reading writing before heading home for the night. It's also a lot of behind the classroom scenes work including lesson planning prep work, administrative committee work, personal research report book writing, conference presentations, peer reviewing editing etc. Anything that will help to make a name for yourself in your respective field. Some session or part time instructor friends work 60 plus and get paid less than 20,000 slash year. Some former, tenured, colleagues of mine work 80 plus HRS a week, not all though. Farmers growers. They are usually portrayed as ignorant rustics, lacking in knowledge about much outside their farms. Meet most of them now and you'll find that very few fit that stereotype. Now most have agricultural degrees with environmental science backgrounds. While old school methods are not completely obsolete, these modern methods and advanced knowledge have helped the average grower in all areas of their livelihood. I have a hay supplier who actually works for Cargill full time and his hay operation is so technologically advanced. It is amazing. The knowledge of each field soil analysis is in depth and consistent, and quality control is very accurate. It's almost like feeding people is an industry with some money behind it. Almost. Police officers. 50% paperwork. 40% sitting in one spot or driving around. 10% the action you see on TV. Any computer programming job. Whether it be hacking into the mainframe or let me code you up something quick that will do the trick it's always just people bashing their hands against a keyboard. They never show the planning, 
requirements documents, licensing the software or tools you need, waiting for approval, working in a team, anything like that. I stop watching shows when a character just develops a fix that saves the day in like 40 seconds because that's more unrealistic than if that person flew around the world and reversed time like Superman. Nobody wants to watch a show about a guy staring at a wall or walking aimlessly around for hours while they work something out in their head, though. Soldiers. Not one myself, but if Reddit is correct it's very long stretches of boredom interrupted by very short moments of danger. Also there's lots of fapping apparently. Writer. They always portray them as disorganized, or drunk, or out of touch with reality, and successful, but this is rarely the case. It's lots of hard work slipped in between a day job so we can put food on the table. And if you're drunk all the time, you never get writing finished. You may turn out a rough draft that way, but it's virtually impossible to edit to a publishable draft that way. And some of us don't drink or use drugs at all. I think somewhere between Edgar Allan Poe, Ernest Hemingway, Hunter S. Thompson, and Stephen King the idea of a doped up smoker chained to a typewriter took hold in the collective conscious of the world. <laughs> Doctors. Misconceptions because of Hollywood about healthcare. 1. That all female doctors wear high heels in hospital. 2. That every doctor bangs every other doctor in hospital. 3. That at the end of every day in the hospital chasing cars start playing and you narrate the significant things that happened that day in your head. 4. That as soon you stub a toe and go to the hospital you will get hooked up to a heart rate monitor and get infusion. 5. That a heart rate monitor will be all you need to recognize serious events for patients. 6. That a heart rate monitor makes the traditional long beep when heart stops. 7. That you have to fire adrenaline right into the heart, looking at you Quentin. 8. Hollywood portrays US healthcare about love and patient care. Even though US healthcare is centered around squeezing the most money out of those that have insurances, you can literally fly retour to Spain and have a holiday and get a hip replacement in Spain for same money. 9. That most of healthcare isn't just waiting a lot as a patient, especially in a 10. That scanning with MRI or CT will always result in a correct diagnosis. 11. That most of patients are young and healthy except for that dramatic seizure or sickness. Most patients in real life are old to very old and are smokers overweight etc. The young and healthy ones with sudden diseases are a rare sighting. 12. That every doctor has all the time in the world. 13. Comas are very common and people wake up from it all the time with no consequences. 14. That life in hospital is not monotonous. Also, that most people come back from codes. The military. Very few films get it right. Watch any war film with a combat vet and they'll pick it apart. It's usually the little things that bother us. In combat, you're filthy, yet everyone in the movies is spot clean. When I was deployed no one showered for 4-6 months. Also, nobody wears dog tags besides boots. New guys. But in every movie you have some shirtless dude walking around with his tags dangling from his neck. In real life. Almost everything is semi-auto, but in the movies everything is fully auto, even the M16s and M4S. During a scene in the Hurt Locker you see one Humvee driving down the street. Never gonna happen. Anytime a vehicle goes outside the wire it's a full convoy of up to a dozen armored Vicks. There's a lot of things wrong with that movie but I still enjoy it. I'm going to go on a limb here and say chemistry teachers don't actually cook M on the side and throw pizzas on their roofs. Not so much a job, but going to jail. You always see two or three friends put in the same cell or something. If anything, when you get to jail you might wait an hour tops in a drunk tank with a friend. But after that, you will be booked, separated, and locked down on your own. There is no grace period with a phone and your friends standing around. Teaching. We are mainly not idealistic weavers of imagination and dreams, sadists who hate kids or frustrated M cooking geniuses. We are a motley crew who generally got into teaching as a second or third career option and stayed on the crap wages as we enjoy the holidays and the interaction with the kids. 
The idealistic, do-gooding types normally quit fairly fast because they can't cope with the copious bureaucratic bollocks or the harrowing child protection meetings that were oddly missing from dead poet society. Also generally underrepresented are the levels of mental illness alcoholism, the way your life morphs into a countdown to the next weekend holiday, and a fairly rife shagging of colleagues. The most accurate representation has probably been the old British show teachers, and that had freaking zebras running down the hallways. I disagree with the second or third career option comment. Myself and every teacher I know either always wanted to be a teacher or took on teaching as a second career because what we did before wasn't fulfilling enough. Everything else is pretty dead on. As for shows that get it right, I thought Boston Public was pretty accurate. You have been visited by the tourist god comment photos everywhere to get an exciting trip full of adventure. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.